And uh, we have with us the UNC Senator, Mr. Wade Mark, no stranger to the Observer. Special good evening to you, comrade. Yes, special good evening to you, Mikey K, and your audience. All right. Well, shouldn't we as uh, citizens be in our glee? We're talking back pay, we're talking Christmas, we're talking $3 more in our pockets. Uh, is there anything to celebrate? What say you? Well, you know, the proof of the pudding always lies in the eating. And what this minister, who people are describing in and around TNT as we speak, as the merchant of debt, destruction, and despair, what he is crowing about, and nothing is the same. This reminds me of his leader when he had an interview some years ago and he told his interviewer that his philosophy is one of making the rich richer and the poor poorer because for the poor to become viable then they need rich people. So when you look at the economic philosophy of this administration, what do you see? You see a lot of frills. You see a lot of smoke and mirrors. But in reality, when we look at what I call the litmus test, what are we seeing? We are seeing a gap, a widening gap between those who have and those who do not have. So this so-called 4% increase that they have imposed on the public servants, may I remind you, Mikey K, that the zero in 2014, the zero in 2015, and the 2% in 2016 is equivalent to the junior firefighter of $231 at the end of 2016. If you go to 17, 18, and 19, at the end of 2019, it just might be some $60 more, $290 something dollars. So in real terms, the, what has been given is nothing on the same. And then to impose that for this four percent over a two year or two triennium cycle is to really insult the public officers. So for you to be crowing and talking about back pay, back pay for who? You don't you have almost twenty eight thousand civil servants, their PSD, Public Services Association, they have not signed any agreement. The people who have signed, as you know, is fire, is police, right. is amalgamated. So when he tells you he's instructing civil servants, um, permanent secretaries to prepare pay sheets, which permanent secretaries in which ministry is this man talking about? because the permanent secretaries are located in the civil service in the main. And who are the people who are getting back pay? They are from the police. Right. Who is the head of the police service? Who is the accounting officer? The commissioner of police. So at the end of the day, it is just frills. It is just smoke and mirror at the end of the day. No, no, no. Now, a lot was said, Senator. One of the things here, I just want to touch on this property tax. He said, we have always ensured that our non-energy tax structure meet international practice. To that end, we have consistently reformed our income corporate tax structures and value-added taxes. Our efforts at aim, are aimed at strengthening our domestic tax base and improving domestic resource mobilization to meet our current and developmental needs. Our new addition, the property tax, which has replaced land and building taxes suspended in 2010 and now fully repealed. Now, now, in all of that, 
and, and I want, I, there's a lot of verbal acrobats there because we have consistently reformed our income corporate tax structure and our efforts are aimed at strengthening our domestic tax base. Is he saying basically that the money that is needed to resource this mobilization to meet current and developmental needs will have to come from basically taxing the citizens? Now, Mikey K, loaded in what that statement refers to is what is not being told to the citizenry. You, we have to appreciate that in 2023, at the end of fiscal year 2023, the government estimated oil and gas revenues amounting to $25 billion. What has happened? Where is the accountability? Did we realize the $25 billion? However, come 2024, when you look at the oil and gas revenues estimated for 2024 fiscal year, Mikey K, that has been reduced from $25 billion in 2023 to $16 billion in 2024. Now, what has happened? What has accounted for this drastic fall of close to $9 billion in less than a year? The minister has not answered that question. What we do know is that the, 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 the production of natural gas has precipitously declined by close to 40%. Now, these are things that the minister is not sharing with the population. So when you talk about all this strengthening of the corporate and income tax structure, those things are words. But we have to deal with the reality. The reality is that oil and gas revenue have collapsed by close to $9 billion in less than one year. Yeah, but Senator, but, but Senator, with all due respect, yes, I mean, your, your colleague David Lee was on first, and he spoke about the manatee field, he spoke about the dragon gas, and, and basically told us that in, in all reality, that in itself it cannot come about. But here you have a budget that is telling us that when it comes to non-oil revenue, we are looking at 35.547 billion. Now the oil revenue is expected to be at 16.709 billion and non-oil revenue at 35.547 billion. Where is that non-oil sector revenue coming from? That's a big question. That is the question. Where is that 35 billion non-oil or non-energy revenue going to come from? And the minister, the minister is not giving us clear answers as it relates to that. Because you and I know that the bulk, this country's lifeblood lies in the natural gas sector. Right. And if the natural gas sector has collapsed, where is this spike in the non-energy revenue base going to come from? The minister is very short on answers. I believe that what is happening is that we are going to have a larger fiscal deficit than, than is being predicted. The minister is talking about a fiscal deficit of some $5.1 billion. We may end up between now and the media review in a range of about $9 billion, maybe $10 billion, because the revenues are not there. So the government is telling us that they are going to have a budget of $59 billion, they're going to generate revenues around $54 billion. There's a gap of $5.1 billion. And you ask the million-dollar question, where is the $35 billion?
trillion non-energy revenue going to come from? From where? From the manufacturing sector? Is it going to come from construction? Is it going to come from transport and storage? We don't know because the minister hasn't provided us with answers. Yeah, but, but, but he goes on as far as property tax again, my friend. He says that this is a new paradigm and the collection of property tax will take some time to ramp up. So he has created a new sub-item for the proceeds of property tax in the goods and services line item in the allocations for municipal corporations and allocated additional appropriate sums of money for each of the 14 corporations in the first instance depending on their population size, ranging from $8 million to $12 million. Now, now, can we trust this, especially from an administration which has shown, whether people want to admit or not, political, geographical discrimination? Can we trust this item in the interim? And he adds that these sums will be suitably increased during the mid-year review if the collection rate of property taxes exceeds expectations. What are we looking at? Now, the question here of property tax exceeding expectation. Now, let's look at the reality. The last time the government collected property tax on the land and building taxes would have been around, let's say, about two years ago, was around, let's say, about seven to six million dollars. What we have seen in the estimate of revenues for 2024 is 151 million dollars. The question that we have to deal with here is simply this. The minister in his local government reform package gave the impression that the monies that are going towards residential properties in terms of taxes is about 3%. He went on to talk about residential properties amounting to 400,000 properties. Now, we also did indicate that the threshold was only 50%, and he has arrived at the 50%, not the 100%. So he is around 200,000 residents that will now have to pay the 3% property tax. Now, where is this 3% property tax going to? Is it going directly to the 14 regional corporations? Is it going into the consolidated fund? Or is the minister going to determine what will go and how much will go? And most importantly, uh, Mikey, the allocation that we are talking about in order to improve the delivery of quality goods and services to purchases in the 14 corporations. Are these allocations going to be reduced in conjunction with the so-called allocation coming through the property tax, which is of a residential nature? These things are all hanging in the air because we don't believe that the Minister of Finance is going to ramp up any allocation towards the corporation in order to ensure that there is effective quality delivery of goods and services in those 14 corporations. And, and, so, and that's the fear. That's the fear, Senator. You're right about that. That is the fear. Uh, the fact of the matter is that they are still the controlling factor and we have seen in the past whether or not people want to admit it, but deliberately underfunding certain corporations because they do not seek their, seek their political interests. So that is something to look at. And, and Mikey K, the question here is simply this. The government had choices. Why did not the government impose property tax? We don't support property tax. Let me just make that clear. Yeah. And we have made it very clear that the United National Congress government will reprieve, will repeal rather, the Property Tax Act. So we have made that very clear. But I'm saying just for argument's sake, if the government wants to be equitable, given the burdens of adjustment 
being unfairly placed on the working class, the middle strata, the working poor. Why do you come to impose a property tax on residential property when you have about what? 3,000, 3,500 industrial properties in Trinidad and Tobago? Would it not be easier for the government to impose a property tax on industrial users or yeah. people who have industrial properties? No, Sorry. but you are coming after the working man. Now, remember, the, the, the government, through the Minister of Finance, has indicated that shortly they are going to increase NIS. Stick, st stick a pin in that. Stick a pin in that, comrade. Our time is up, but I want to ask you a final question. After all of this, what do we have to look forward to? Quickly. Listen, as far as we are concerned, Trinidad and Tobago is in a worrying place. Trinidad and Tobago, under this very inept and incompetent PNM administration, is in deep trouble. And we believe that Trinidad and Tobago is facing a humongous crisis in 2024 and that again is manifested in the collapse of natural gas production which has moved from 4.2 billion cubic feet in 2014-2015 to 2.5 billion meaning meaning wow. um mikey that lng in Point Lisas, in Point Forte, operating at 65% capacity. All the plants at Point Lisas operating between 70 and 75% capacity. So revenues that are supposed to come from LNG, revenues that are supposed to come from Point Lisas are not coming. So you know what they are doing? They are breaking the back of the working class. They are breaking the back of the middle strata because right. of the competent and mismanagement by Rowley, George Young, and Imbert. Thank you so much, comrade. It's been a pleasure, as always, for your input. Thank you so much. And that Thank was you. UNC Senator um, Wade Mark.